anxiety disorders. They impact nearly 20 million people in America alone. In fact, they are the most common psychiatric disorders affecting both children and adults. And with the increasing stress of living in the 21st century, on both a global and personal level, this subject is getting more attention than ever. There are several anxiety disorders identified in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, commonly known as the DSM. Though they share a common theme of excessive, irrational fear and worry, each anxiety disorder has its own distinct features and challenges. In this program, we're going to explore what is called obsessive compulsive disorder. Bob has an uncontrollable need to check things over and over. Bob, come on, we're late. I'm coming, honey, don't worry. To the point where it takes up quite a bit of his day. Wendy is a college student obsessed with contamination. She worries constantly about germs and cleanliness. These two individuals have obsessive compulsive disorder commonly referred to as OCD. We hear examples of people who can't stop counting, people who can't stop washing their hands, people who can't stop checking the doors to make sure things are locked. Now, the definition of obsessive compulsive disorder is in fact that it impairs your functioning in some way. You might wonder what does that have to do with anxiety and uh, the, the, the rituals are a way uh, that this person will manage their anxiety. For years, mental health professionals thought of OCD as a rare disorder. However, many people with the disorder had simply failed to seek treatment because of their desire to keep their thoughts and behaviors secret. They're not oftentimes willing to disclose it to family who of course see the symptoms but may not know what it is. Uh, and they're oftentimes um, not so forthcoming to reveal the symptoms to physicians, for instance, because, for instance, much of the, the ritualistic uh, behavior, the compulsions of OCD, tend to be quite uh, embarrassing and also distressing to the individual. Surveys revealed that actually more than 2% of the U.S. population has OCD, making it more common than schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or panic disorder. Today, it accounts for nearly 6% of national mental health costs. As with all of the anxiety disorders, there are several specific criteria in the DSM that establish what constitutes an obsessive compulsive disorder. So you feel you have to clean your apartment every single day? Well, not just clean it. I mean, I have to, you know, disinfect it. One is that the individual must show signs of either obsessions or compulsions, which we will later define in more detail. I know it might seem crazy. I just can't relax unless I'm doing that. The next criterion, which only applies to adults, is that at some point during the course of the disorder, the person has recognized that the obsessions or compulsions are excessive or unreasonable. Bob, I don't want to be the last ones there. I'll be there. Another criterion is that the obsessions or compulsions caused marked distress, take more than an hour a day, or significantly interfere with the person's normal routine, occupational or academic functioning, or usual social activities or relationships. When clinicians first meet somebody uh, who's concerned with the possibility about having OCD, it's oftentimes impairments in social functioning, but especially in work functioning, that tend to be most, most prominent. So have you ever been seen for any other psychiatric disorder before? Well, yeah, my first year of college I kind of got depressed and I saw someone, but I didn't see them for very long. The next criterion is that if another Access One disorder is present, the content of the obsessions or compulsions is not restricted to it. For example, preoccupation with food in the presence of an eating disorder. Do you take medication or use drugs? Well, I don't anymore, but a year ago I was taking antidepressants. The final criterion is that the disturbance is not due to the direct physiological effects of a substance such as a drug of abuse or medication, nor the result of a general medical condition. Although OCD usually starts in adolescence or early adulthood, it may begin in childhood, showing up earlier in males than females. Generally, the onset is gradual, with about 15% showing progressive deterioration in occupational and social functioning. The disorder affects men and women equally and people of all ethnic groups. 
There appears to be a genetic link as the rate is higher for identical twins and first-degree relatives of those with Tourette's disorder. And it appears to have a clear familial pattern, more so than most other anxiety disorders. The term obsessive-compulsive disorder comes from its two defining components, obsessions and compulsions. The definition of an obsession is a repetitive, intrusive thought, image, or impulse that is difficult, if not impossible, to control. Obsessions are defined by four components. I've just been so stressed over it lately. It's like I can't go five seconds without thinking about cleaning something or like I'm being infected with something. The first is that there are recurrent and persistent thoughts, impulses, or images that are experienced at some time during the disturbance as intrusive and inappropriate and that cause marked anxiety or distress. I leave a room and I close the door. I kind of think about that I need to go back and like clean it because I touched it. Have you thought about seeing someone about this? The second is that the thoughts, impulses, or images are not simply excessive worries about real-life problems. They include, for instance, those um, um, pretty profound obsessions, those unwanted 